Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make these proper brush stroke effects. If you're part of the crew community, then you can download all of the project files for this tutorial. Now, there are lots of ways to already create these by basically finding pictures of brush strokes. There's lots of them out there or alpha mats. You can colorize them and then you can basically just mask them out. In this video, I really wanna go back to the basics of creating these because I get questions. It's something that Vox, you know, do a lot in their videos but basically really focus on how would you create your own custom ones, a lot of the detail that you would get in those proper brush strokes. So the first thing we're gonna do is just create a new composition. This can be whatever you like. I'm just gonna make mine 1920. Then we need to actually create the brush. So what I'm going to do is first create a new composition. This will be my brush stroke. And then I'm also going to create another composition, but this one's going to be 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And this is the one that we're going to create the brush in. So what I'm going to do is just create a new solid here. And for this, what I want to do is apply the, the turbulent noise. Now the exact settings that I used are here on screen. All I did was I just messed around with the complexity left this basically as default and just really scaled up on the contrast and the brightness. It's this brightness that you're going to use to basically get or fine tune that brush. So I'll show you just in a minute. I'm first just going to rename that one to the actual brush so we can keep track of all of our layers. I'm gonna drag that brush in and this is what we end up with. Now with that layer, what I can do is I can also just stretch it out slightly. I'm going to hit P, create a position keyframe here, move across in the timeline, create something like that, make these ones easy ease. And with those layers, what I can do, if I scroll through my pen tool here, I can basically create these little handles, which will give it a slight curve sort of movement. Now we actually want to create the echo, which is, there's lots of tutorials on this, but I just want to do it slightly different to how I've seen those tutorials done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create basically a adjustment layer here. And this one we're going to call uh, echo. Now the echo, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for echo up here and then just add it to that layer. Now the exact settings that I've used here are here on screen, but basically you wanna try and get that time down as low as possible. Then what I find is a useful thing, if you go to the end of your composition, you can scale this up and down until the beginning part of your uh, basically brush stroke disappears. And that's how you know you need the minimum amount of echoes. So that's how I got to that number there. The other thing I also like to do is I go back to that brush pattern and I can add a bit of a mask. So what I'm going to do is add something where like the brush sort of has like this sort of effect like this. If you think about this is the start and this is the end, what we're gonna do is if you go back to that brush, you get that pattern sort of playing out on screen. Now you can mess around with this by moving and adjusting this later you don't have to leave it just like that but the other cool thing is if you go into that brush and then mess around with the actual brightness so if you drag this down for instance you'll start to get more sort of like gaps appear so you can really mess around with this to kind of get something slightly more interesting you want a lot more detail or you can scale it up the other way if you want it more solid that's the great thing about messing around with just that brightness. The other thing I want to do is now add a bit of tint and a bit of, of texture to this. The first thing I want to add is a tint and I can change the white to be whatever color that you want your brush stroke to be. The other thing I also added on here was some roughened edges. Now the roughened edges just gives it a lot more texture. So what you can do is these are the settings that I've used. I've mainly just used the rusty here. You can also basically just search for this up here and then add it to that layer. I've messed around with these settings here just to kind of get, you know, a, a pattern that I'm happy with. The other thing I also add on is the directional blur. Now the directional blur is what sort of smooths out this whole thing. You can basically make it 90 degrees, which means it's gonna run sort of horizontal and then you can scale this up or down. And that's really what's gonna give you those softer edges. 
Now I can go back into that rough and edges and you can mess around then with that border. So if you want sort of more or less of that layer or that, that basically that brush, then you can scale this border up and down. You can also mess around with the scale if you wanna make it larger or smaller or just go back into that brightness setting and mess around with that if you wanna basically you know, adjust it to however you like. So if you want something more with a sort of filled in, then I would just drag up or down on that brightness. The other thing that I'm also going to add, or which is slightly different from the way that I've seen it done before, is really use the rough and edges effect. So what I'm gonna do is create another adjustment layer, and this one, I can just call this one edges. And to this one, I'm also gonna add another rough and edges. And you'll see that this really just kind of softens up those edges all the way through, kind of creates these holes like that. Now you can mess around with this if you want more or less. So if you just really wanted to focus on the edge, then you can drag this down. Otherwise you can drag it up. You can also mess around with the sharpness if you want to sort of take more of that edge out. And also the scale is the other big thing. If you want to really create something that's fine detail, then you can really drag this down and you sort of end up with this brush sort of effect like this. So you can also just go back in here and adjust the speed of it however you kind of want. The other thing that I really did to sort of really sell this effect is I'm gonna hit T and create an opacity keyframe. And if I go across, I'm just gonna create another one here at the end. And I want these to be quite low. So maybe around like 16 and the end one maybe somewhere around six. Now in the middle, what I'm going to do is scale this right up. So, so basically when it fades on, you get sort of softer edges. Now you can mess around with this if you want sort of like something a little bit more prominent, or you can even drag this right down at the start if you want it really soft here. and even kind of drag in on these points. You can see it kind of creates that really soft edge. And that's starting to look really nice. I'm quite happy with how that is. So now what we can do is we can always come back and readjust this, but I'm gonna go back to my main composition now and just start building out my overall look of what I'm going for. I'm gonna add this image in here over the background. I can add a little bit of contrast to this, something like this. If you wanna learn more about all of this sort of stuff, you know, adding these effects to sort of layer all these things together to really create something that stands out, then you definitely wanna check out my Animation Master course or my Animation Pro course for intermediates. Animation Master is my basics course. It leads you through After Effects, even if you've never used the program before, show you how to create all these different types of animations. I've had students get amazing results, people that have never used After Effects before to really creating videos and animations that stand out. If you're somewhat more comfortable using After Effects and you want something a little bit more advanced, then check out my Animation Pro course. This dives even deeper into the layering effects, all of those textures and things like that that you would see used in a lot of those Vox style animations, all of those sort of things. I cover in a lot more detail in that course. I've got tons of student testimonials that you can read. There's also links for both of those courses in the description below. If you're serious about learning After Effects and you wanna take your animation to that next level, then check out the two courses via the links in the description. Now what I'm gonna do is drag that brush stroke over the top and then I can change the blending mode here. So I'm just gonna change this to be like, just gonna change this to be like screen, something like that. And then I can just type out my text. So if I want my text here, I'm just gonna call this one like, I'm just gonna position it here over that brush stroke. And then I'm gonna link this one using the track mat to that brush stroke layer and also turn on that brush stroke again. And so this is basically going to reveal it when it fades in. So we want to basically have a reveal as like an alpha mat for that layer. So that's something else you can do there. Some other things that I also added here in my original composition was I added an overlay, which is this video clip here. You can find these sort of overlays by searching for them, you know, online. 
and basically I just put that over the top and I just set that to be a color dodge and that sort of then really just kind of adds that nice texture over the whole thing, makes it look really nice. So the other thing I got here was this little image here of like these trains that go in line with the sort of composition that I'm working on. I can change these ones to be invert and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my pen tool to basically just kind of cut these out and sort of position them somewhere like that. I'm, I'm then going to change these to be like something like color dodge that sort of just sits there in the background. I can also just take that layer and add a very slight feather to that mask, something to sort of blend those edges there slightly. And the other thing I also did, so I just kind of added in these little images here. I can just duplicate that one, move it up here. And what I did to those is I also just kind of added a little circle that kind of went around these. You just change the fill to be none. And that kind of creates that that kind of creates that little circle. Then you can also with that same layer select it, just add a basically like a little line that connects them and then add another circle down here, which kind of goes around this one, all on the same sort of layer. And it kind of then creates this really nice little effect. You can then cycle through the different modes or the blending modes by going in here and changing these to be whatever you like, something like soft light, anything like that just to sort of really make it stand out. And then with the overlay effect added on, it just kind of brings this whole thing together. You can add a bit of a zoom over the top by just adding some scale keyframes to that background layer. But that's pretty much it on how you can create brush strokes. Again, you can go back and mess around with any of these settings. Really, um, on this brush layer, you're really messing around with just the brightness. And on this one, you're really gonna find you're gonna get better results by messing around with the rough and edges effect. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks you can use in your own videos. You can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of screen. I'll have links to all of my courses down in the description below if you wanna learn more about this process. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.